Let's take a look at some more managerial accounting terminology. Most companies use two definitions of product cost. We've got first, we've got total cost, which is the cost of all the resources that we use throughout our value chain. Remember that we talked about direct cost and indirect cost. Some of all the direct cost and indirect cost is your total cost. Companies use this to only for internal purposes. Basically, they only use this to figure out a selling price. They want to make sure that they cover all the costs uh, of bringing the product to the customer, plus they want a profit on their product. So um, the total cost, again, is only used internally. The second definition of cost is what we call inventoriable product cost. We only use this for external reporting. GAAP mandates that we use only certain costs to report our inventories. So which costs are these? These are only the costs incurred in producing the item or cost incurred to purchase the item. Production is for a manufacturer. Purchasing costs are for a merchandiser. So only the costs that are incurred during the production or purchase stage of your value chain can be treated as inventory. Inventory, if you remember, is an asset in the balance sheet, so all the costs incurred can be treated as an asset until the product is sold. When the product is sold, we expense it in our income statement as cost of goods sold. So let's take a look at our value chain again. So here's our value chain. Do you see the one element that is production or purchase, any costs incurred in this particular element is going to be treated as inventory until it is sold. All, how about all the other elements? Research and development, design, customer service, distribution and marketing, those are expensed in the period that they are incurred. So if you spend $200,000 for research and development, you have to write it off as expenses in the current period. Next, we'll take a look at inventoriable product costs in a little bit more detail. For a manufacturer, inventoriable product costs includes all the manufacturing costs. So let's take a little bit more detail look at what all the manufacturing costs are. Uh, there are three types of manufacturing costs. There's direct materials. Direct materials are basically the raw materials that they become part of the finished product. For example, if you remember the iPhone that we talked about earlier, the direct materials are the raw materials that we use, which would be, um, I think, things like the screen, the battery, the plastic they use, all those would be direct materials. Those can be traced to your product, which is the iPhone. Direct labor is the cost of compensation for employees who physically convert raw materials into the company's product. So pretty much all you're talking about is the assembly line wages. So whenever you see assembly line wages, you know that those are direct labor. Direct materials and direct labor, if you remember, are direct costs because they can be traced to your product. Then we have indirect costs. We call these costs for a manufacturer, those are called manufacturing overhead which includes all the manufacturing costs other than direct materials and direct labor. So you have direct materials, direct labor, anything that cannot be traced is called manufacturing overhead. Okay, now we're going to take it up a notch and look at manufacturing overhead in more detail. Manufacturing overhead can also be split up into three components. You have indirect materials, indirect labor, and other indirect manufacturing overhead. Indirect materials are materials that you use in the plant. Plant is a factory, which can be, cannot be easily, easily traced to the individual product. What could be indirect materials? What could be materials that are not in the product but could still be used at the factory? Well, the factory has restrooms, Restrooms need to be cleaned and they have janitorial supplies that you need to use to clean the restrooms. Those are indirect materials. You, do not be, you cannot trace the cost of the janitorial supplies to your iPhone. However, those are still supplies or materials that you use in the factory. There are other materials that you find 
in your product, such as, for example, there might be glue, small amounts of glue that um, you use to hold parts of the iPhone together. Those can be traced to your uh, product. However, um, the co figuring out how much that glue costs would be cost prohibitive. So it doesn't make sense for you to figure out, okay, how much glue went into each iPhone. Things like that we treat them as indirect materials. You take your total cost and you say, oh, that's not a direct material, that's an indirect material. So in your exam questions, you'll find things like glue, salt, um, lubricants, things that you do find in minute quantities in your product, but they are very little, so you treat them as indirect materials. The next type of manufacturing overhead is indirect labor. Indirect labor is the cost of all the employees in the plant other than the employees directly converting raw materials into the finished product. So the cost of all the wages other than the assembly line workers. So the plant manager, the maintenance staff, the janitorial staff, all their wages is considered indirect labor. The last type of manufacturing overhead is called other indirect manufacturing overhead. And this is basically anything else other than indirect materials and indirect labor. So anything like insurance, any depreciation on the factory, any equipment depreciation, any property taxes for the factory, utilities, repairs, maintenance, all those are indirect, other indirect manufacturing overhead. Again, you need to keep the big picture in mind, which is that these are inventoryable product costs, which means you only include factory costs in this particular category. And lastly, let's take a look at two more definitions. We have what we call prime costs and conversion costs. Prime costs are defined as direct materials plus direct labor. So if I ask you what prime costs are, you should know that those are the total of direct material costs and direct labor costs. Conversion costs are defined as direct labor plus manufacturing overhead. So conversion costs equal all direct labor costs plus all manufacturing overhead costs. We'll be using prime and conversion costs later on during the semester, so be sure to remember what they are.